Hello, I've been learning the programming language Go for the past week. And I've been learning the basics like variables, file I.O. and concurrency. And Go seems to have a really simple concurrency model with its Go routine, so you can make useful patterns like buffered and unbuffered channels. And it also has atomics for synchronization. Uh, I've also been looking into the library Raylib. And Raylib is just a library for making video games, so you can load textures, uh, render 2D and 3D objects, uh, and also load audio and play audio and stuff like that. So I've made a little application. Uh, it's just a really simple application for displaying weather data. I hit a HTTP endpoint from openweathermap.org to get the current weather data back for a particular city. Also in my application, I have a user input section so the user can input a city name from anywhere in the UK and get back current weather weather data for that particular city. So I'm going to show you my code for this application that I've written over the past couple of days with Go and Raylib. So here's the code for this weather application. Uh, most of it is just easy to read stuff, um, but I've also done a few things like make some simple custom text files. So for example, I get city names of all the cities in the UK, and I've just got this in a a massive text file here that I just load straight into my application and uh, put them in a a big array and then just search through them uh, and that that gets loaded in main so here I just go into here and then I read it all in and put it in a massive array and return it as a custom base cities type or a cities array type um, and then I uh, get the actual latitude and longitude of each city. So if I were searching it up London here, I would get the latitude and longitude and put it into the uh, get weather data, which, which sends the request off to openweathermap.org. So in here, uh, it's just got all the stuff. And I do a little bit of uh, file checking. So for example, I save the JSON that comes back from the request uh, to like store it. So if, for example, you close the application down and then reopen it instantly, it doesn't have to send another request off. It actually waits, I think, five minutes. So I wait five minutes until you, you know, check for another request. And I do all the uh, integer parsing and stuff like that for each month, day and hour and then I check if all that matches and uh, if it does then I just load that JSON file back up. If it doesn't I just go ahead and uh, send the request. After that I save the file back, the JSON file, uh, which is here. Uh, I don't actually think... yeah it's not actually valid JSON because I've put the time at the top here. So this is just the this is just the date uh, and the time. So th this one was stored at 1905. So it would check to see if the uh, time matches. And then if it doesn't, it will just overwrite this. So, and the main just does everything that's pretty simple, you know, getting textures and, uh, you know, initial initializing the window and stuff like that. Um, but also for the textures, I have a kind of custom pack file uh, that I've created. It's not really a pack file. It's more of just uh, a custom format. I've got PNGs in there. So the PNGs are, uh, if I, do I have a hex edit yet? I do. Uh, so I can probably throw my set it thing into here okay so this is the pack file that i've created uh, it's it's a basic kind of thing um it just has at the start the the actual file name and then this 0 to 948 is the actual byte location so the start of the byte location this one starts at 0 and this one it goes on to 948 bytes and then it just does that for all of the the PNG files. 
So that's like a, a just an array of stuff. And then you have this end here, and then from that point on is just PNG files right next to each other. So it's basically just like uh, simple PNG files. There's no, no encoding going on here, so I can just load this all straight into memory. So yeah, that's what the, the pack file does. Um, and then we just have the, the main loop for Raylib, so it goes through this loop all the time. And I think we also have a... We should yep yeah, focused thing here. So if the the window isn't focused, then we drop the FPS target. Uh, so it runs at 15 FPS. You don't really need to run it at 60 when it's not focused. And it also clears the the uh, garbage collection every 10 seconds while it's not focused, uh, just to make sure that I haven't got any garbage in there. Uh, and then if it's focused, it goes back up to 60. Uh, and I've got some basic collision in here as well for the the mouse and the the mouse and the input. Uh, so every time you hover over the input, it just displays it. I think that's down here somewhere. Yeah, it's down here. Um, and I've got some basic input. I've got some basic keyboard input stuff. So that accepts. Uh, I think that's just Unicode stuff. I don't think it'll accept anything else but Unicode. So I've also got this file called cities.go and this has everything to do with cities. So for example, this is where I would search up city names and get the city info back. And so, and load the city files and get the lat long. Uh, and also in the lat long, I, I do a bit of, you know, two upper to make sure they can match and stuff. Uh, and also in here, I've got a get partial. So if, for example, you've entered a name with a lowercase l, it'll just return the first city that it finds for that. And then I've got this file here, file.go, which just lo loads in all the textures uh, from the uh, files that I've got, the pack file. So I just call this pretty much on all the uh, all the PNG files and then in here I also read the pack file so you know that does a, a couple of getting the file extension and seeing if the file extension is right and then going through each each thing in the array so I get the file extension and the start and end byte and then I load the image with the file extension and the, the data that I've loaded in. And this is where Go is quite useful because you can do array splitting or I think it's array splitting. So I can say, you know, get this part of the array by the start, start and end byte. And that'll just get that part of it. I think other languages have that as well. I think Python has this kind of stuff. But I've just I've never used this before, so I find it quite quite useful. And then I've got a, a multi-threaded, a basic multi-threaded write to file here. So I just lock the mutex and then unlock it when I'm writing files. Nothing too fancy. I think that in a basic way it's correct, but it won't scale very well. Also searching textures uh, or getting the format of time for my custom, well, my uh, JSON file that I save and checking file exists, so. And then I also have this weather.go file, which again, just does the, uh, the basic stuff, gets the weather data from the uh, API. It also has the weather data struct. So this is what comes back from the API in JSON. And then it just all encodes it as this struct so I can save everything. So yeah, it's it's a pretty basic app, but um, I've done a lot behind the scenes. Example, for example, these custom uh, these custom files that I I made. Uh, usually, you will get this from the Open Weather Data API. You just call the API and get this these uh, cities back with the lat long, but I chose to actually save them offline and put them in an array just so I can easily access them. 
because I thought maybe it's, you know, it's probably easier and faster to access them when they're in my memory rather than, you know, online. So yeah, that in a basic kind of way, this is it. Um, we also have the basic collision here for the mouse. I do all the, the collision stuff and get the keyboard input. And uh, if the, the, you know, enters pressed, then delete the search term and look up the the weather and the uh, weather texture. So I have also have the uh, weather texture in the the application. I also got these textures off the open weather map website. I just downloaded them and put them in my pack file. So anytime you're uh, searching up a searching up a city name, it changes the image instantly pretty much. So yeah, that's about it. I draw all the text here. I'm doing all this draw text and uh, yeah, it's it's a very basic application, but I think I've learned a lot by doing this. And I've definitely learned a lot by writing files in Go. I've done, you know, I've, I've written a custom parser to make these pack files and I had to convert this JSON from the open weather map uh, website that I got off the website and this contains I think all cities in the world there's definitely Australia I think there's India obviously the US but I'd go through this whole file and convert all of them and find the uh, UK city names and then convert into my cities.txt that I could easily read. Uh, so yeah, I, I have learned a lot from doing this. From File.io and con basic concurrency and stuff like that. Uh, I might upload this to GitHub. I might share this on GitHub. Maybe I'd have to warn people that this isn't production data, so don't. You know, don't just kind of steal this code and put it out there because this isn't really production code. But yeah, that's kind of what I've learned in Go. It's been an experience. And I'll definitely be learning more Go, probably concurrency, since that seems so interesting. So yeah, that's about it. I'll see you next time. Bye.